and I've been here since 2010. Keep in mind, I had lived in the United States all those years from 1967 until 2010. So I consider myself to be more of an American. I know that my service, I did it in gratitude for the country that gave me an education, gave me a home. English is my first language. When I go to sleep, I dream in English. And now all of a sudden I'm stuck in this country that doesn't speak English. I'm ridiculed. I'm discriminated against. They call me güero, gabacho, plastico, which means that I'm a fake Mexican. So I'm not wanted here. Can't go to the United States because the government doesn't want me there. So I'm literally a man with no country. And then to add insult to injury, my name in the United States is tattooed on my back, Gomez. That's the name of the parents that adopted me. I get shot over here. And Mexico has this messed up rule. And no, they only accept what's on your birth certificate. So now I got to use my biological mother's name, a name that I've never used before. So believe me, I just go through a big culture shock. And after being 14 years clean, I go right back to using. It cost me my marriage. I make no excuse. It was my choice. But I just didn't know how to handle all this. The feeling that I'm never going to be a part of this. Whenever I spoke Spanish, they would always say that I talk like a Puerto Rican. So all I did was just spiral, spiral downward and downward. And it just got worse and worse, especially after my wife and my, and my kids leave the scene. Then I just get really bad. Now I'm just mainlining through my veins. Whatever fit in a syringe, that's what I was shooting up. Uh, I would work. I wouldn't steal because this is the wrong place to be stealing, especially if you're not from here. I finally, it just got so bad where I had to raise my hand and say, you know, I can't go on like this. So I'm going to rehab and it was probably the best choice I ever made. It was a government sponsored one. They had real psychologists. They helped me with my PTSD that I've been lugging around since I was seven because I got molested and beat the crud out of. I find out in my psych therapy sessions that my punishment is now considered <laughs> torture. Go figure. And I was able to put to rest all the demons of my past. It was hell. It was nine months of hell. But it was so worth it. I finally know who and what I am. And more importantly, I accept it. I have a new confidence. I have a new belief in God. And I have a purpose and a direction. I see that now is to help other people just like me. They get thrown over because I know I'm not the only one. I stuck it out. God rewarded me. I just really feel that it's an injustice that you get lied to from a recruiter. I don't think it was justice that got me deported for life. It was only a $20 sale. I mean, I'm not Pablo Escobar, you know what I mean? I was a dope fiend that was just selling a little bit of crack on the side, just trying to make ends meet. Yeah, bad decision. Broke the law. Okay, I paid the price. But this would be double jeopardy. And this just far exceeds what a superior court judge sends me to. And I just don't see the justice in this. I can't get past it. I can't get over it. And I'm not the only one. There's about 50 other veterans just like me that are deported over here for like some petty any stuff i just really think the united states of america really needs to take a good hard look at its hardline policies about deportation and especially where vets are concerned i mean my god we at least serve put our life on the line we were willing to go especially as a marine willing to go any place anytime anywhere in the world and fight for truth liberty and justice and now look at the justice we're receiving it's just cold and it needs to be reformed not just for me, but for anybody. I mean, I'm finally at peace with myself, so if I never go back home, I'm okay with it. I would love to, because I have a granddaughter over there that I've never met, and that I probably won't, because they won't come over here. And that really chokes me up. Now, I may never... <clears throat> I may never meet my granddaughter, because they just refuse to come across that border. Because it's so insecure here, and everybody hears about the murders... And it's true, there's at least two, two murders every night here in TJ. It's just a cold reality. And um, I just pray to God that, that people change this.